welcome back to the bucket list with me, Beth Crystal Wilson, brought to you tonight from Flamingo Land as part of our summer series. I think it's about time we went and had a look around. Ross, we've got a fantastic view here. We can see lots of the park. Can you tell us a bit about uh, some of the things we can see in the distance? Absolutely. This is actually one of my favourite views at Flamingoland because it kind of encapsulates what we're about. And you can see everything. So you can see our Africa zone within the zoo. And just behind us, we've got ostriches, uh, giraffes, zebras, our hippos and rhinos. And then beyond that, that's where all the fun is. That's the theme park there. And off in the distance, you can see some of our real thrill rides, the big tall roller coasters, the tall tower rides. And then beyond that, right in the distance, is our holiday resort. And then the national park right on the horizon there so yeah this view really is flamingo land so many things all rolled into one there it's a zoo it's a theme park it's a resort there's plenty for people to do how has it sort of grown and developed over the years i'm assuming it didn't just pop up like this straight away yeah it's changed immensely um we're actually standing in the middle of what was an old farming estate going back hundreds of years ago um, and we have the original mansion house still here on site at flamingo land but it really started in the late 1950s uh, when a gentleman called Pentland Hick bought this estate to start as a zoo and he was a real pioneer in zoos and he saw the potential and in 1959-1960 uh, he actually opened the first zoo here and called it Yorkshire Zoological Gardens that's what it was known for about a year or two um, and then it became Flamingo Park shortly after that and it has just grown and grown and grown into what it is today, which is one of the leading tourist attractions in the UK. The story is that he fell in love with flamingos, and why not? I mean, they're amazing, colorful, bright pink birds, and he wanted a name, we, we understand, he wanted a name that was just fun and vibrant and that people would remember. And luckily for us, it worked. And 50 years later, we still are Flamingoland. So 50 years ago the zoo opened, but when was it that the rides came? How long ago have they been here? Some of them look very new. Do you continue to get new ones sort of every year or so? Sure. The attractions really developed in the 1970s and that's where the expansion really took off. I think the owners at the time and the current family, the Gibb family which purchased the park in 78, saw the potential for us to be more than just a zoo, to be a real tourist attraction and we started small, as you do, uh, with some small attractions and they were popular and they brought more visitors and it's just grown and grown. And you're right, if you look around you, in fact actually if you compared Flamingoland today to the late 1950s, there's nothing here that was there then. We have completely transformed this park. The investment, the change, the development is quite staggering. And I've been here for eight years and sometimes I don't recognise the place, it changes so much.
area, another completely different part of Flamingo Land. What is it that goes on here? Uh, this area is called Riverside One. It was a 2014 new development. It's our outdoor events um, arena with dining. As you can see, there's restaurants and bars all around. Um, there's a waterfall, which is obviously the centerpiece. But we have our uh, outdoor stage here where we hold a daily farewell show. Um, we've got our meerkat uh, mascots and uh, acrobatic team uh, that are on every day. And what other things do you have coming up? Obviously the summer holidays sadly are drawing to close. Do things continue to be busy for Flamingo Land right throughout the year? Yes, we've got a concert on this Saturday, the bank holiday, uh, the 29th, where um, it starts from six o'clock, so guests that have been in the theme park and zoo can stay as part of their ticket uh, into the evening. And that's all going to be a 90s reunion theme, so it's going to be headlined by five and supported by Damage, Blazing Squad and Paul Marazzi is coming with a big band. Um, you'll remember him formerly of A1, um, so we're very excited about that. And in terms of other events, you know, Halloween, Christmas, was coming up, what Flamingo Land got on for that? Yeah, we theme both of those events. Um, at Halloween, it's for the whole of the half term in October. Okay. So uh, it's from the 24th of October to the 1st of November. Um, children and adults, if they want, are encouraged to dress up in Halloween. There's two for one offers if you do that at the time on our website. Um, there's a big production show planned for this stage every day. It's called the Trick or Treat Show this year. Um, and they're going to have an illusionist. So I'm looking forward to seeing that myself. And in terms of new developments, we've talked a lot. There's the, the dino park that's new, uh, this area as well. What else is coming up? Uh, what else has been recently built? Well, 2015, was the developments mainly were for the resort. So we have uh, four new cottages that were just uh, renovated. They were opened in July of this year, so they've been very popular the second that they've opened. It's the first time we've had brick-built buildings for people to stay on in the park along with the lodges, holiday homes, log cabins that people can hire anyway. And then we've had a complete new redevelopment down at the leisure complex. So there's now a new sauna, a jacuzzi, um, a new gym, new cafe area. So that again has been all for the concentrate for the resort guests. The speakers and we're winding up straight in your sneakers and dancing like every song he's been just well, one of the newest attractions in the park is Dinostone Park. It was completed in 2014 and all the rides have a dinosaur theme. Sam, your job must be incredibly exciting. I'm sure no two days are the same for you. What's a day in your life? Day in my life, first thing, morning meeting, brief all the staff um, with the help of all the staff uh, so we all know what's going on throughout the day and what's going to happen and what happened yesterday. Um, and then it's going around checking the animals, making sure they're okay. If I'm on section working with the animals like I am today, um, then it's just letting them out, mucking them out, meet and greet with people, doing keeper for the day, doing experiences, um, cutting down trees for the giraffes because they need to eat them every day, uh, more cleaning and then lock up and at the end of a very long day go home. You say go home, but I know that you actually live on site, so you literally you live and breathe this place, don't you? I do, yeah. I live right in the middle of the zoo, so I'm really, really lucky. Um, I'd never say I wasn't. Um, but yeah, I'm here all the time, um, and it's, it's great, really. And what do you enjoy? What's the, the highlight for you? I can see you've even got little uh, uh, earrings with animals <laughs> as well, your camels in your ears. So, I mean, do you get such joy from working with these animals and seeing them, you know, grow up? I do, yeah. It's great working with them, being a part of their lives, um, watching them breed, you know, grow up. Even when they move on, it's, it's sad, but it's, it's what you need to do. It's the whole reason why we're here. Um, it's nice uh, working with the other staff and getting them involved and, and just getting everyone as enthusiastic as possible, really. It's great. And how did you end up with this job? What was your, your training? How did you end up, you know, being here looking after all these animals? Uh, well, I've been doing zookeeper for just over 20 years um, and I started off in Merseyside and I thought when I was 14, right, I'm going to get a job and I'm going to help pay my way at home. Um, and then I ended up getting a voluntary job at the local zoo and never looked back. Um, I've done vet nursing, I've done dog training. And uh, when I came here, it was just sort of came for a, a day visit, met a friend and a few months later I was working here. So, yeah, lucky. <laughs> it's a huge space. How many uh, different species of animals have you got? There's over 100 different species species of animal wow. and uh, ranging from obviously the giraffes, the, yeah. the white rhinos, soon to be black rhinos which is really exciting for us, um, down to fish, you know, tiny birds, huge range. And what's your favourite if you had to pick one? Oh god, everyone always asks me this and I've got no idea. Um, the, the rhinos and the hippos I spend a lot of time with and I really, really appreciate what, what they are. Uh, the camels are just brilliant, the giraffes are amazing, it's really hard to choose. Yeah. And how many of them can you actually be hands on with? Because I know from 
Uh, speaking to zookeepers, people kind of assume, especially when there are babies, you know, at tiger cubs, that you can actually get in there and hold them, but that really isn't the case, is it? <laughs> you might just do it once, maybe, but that would be it. <laughs> um, as far as hands-on is, we only get hands-on if we really need to. The wild animals, at the end of the day, we have to appreciate their space. Um, so if we do have to be hands-on with them, it's, it's in, quick, out, it's well organised. Um, some of the giraffes um, will come up to you and, you know, you can feed them you know, with experiences and stuff. They're sort of, George is right in your face, he's up, <laughs> he's up for a tickle any time. The white rhinos, they're very appreciative of a bit of a tickleage. They don't mind at all, they really enjoy it. Um, so some of the animals do surprise people at how close they can get. Um, we just have to keep in mind what they can do and, and just be careful all the way. What, what animal would you advise people to go and see? Oh my God, all of them. Uh, <laughs> first thing in the morning, come and see the giraffes and the rhinos, they're out, they're doing their stuff. Um, and then later on in the day is probably best time to see the tigers playing. We do have feeding um, times around the zoo, so if you do come and you think, oh, I really want to see that, ask one of the keepers, have a look at the leaflets, and it'll tell you what time's best to see those animals.